rail access or highway access uh, to get there. If that, ha if that happened tomorrow, is there a place for them to move in shovel uh, ready again? Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think uh, there are. Uh, as a matter of fact, even the existing uh, park, industrial park in East Melton, has space that would accommodate uh, a number of these folks because they wouldn't necessarily have to have access to a runway. Uh, Santa Rosa spent $200,000 marketing for the tanker contract. Mm -hmm. And again, disclosure, I complained about that too. Mm -hmm. um, was that money well spent? Would you do that again? I was not involved in that dis uh, decision uh, to do that. Uh, and again, that's uh, getting above my pay grade mm -hmm. to speculate on whether or not they should or should not. You know, I think any time that we can let people in other parts of the country know that we're uh, open and ready for business, that's probably a good thing. How much you spend on that, of course, that uh, is based on uh, you know your available revenues and what you have for marketing and the budget. Mm -hmm. The military is, I believe, it's forty percent of the economy here. Uh, the last figure I heard uh, from the uh, Haas Center at University of West Florida. The latest uh, figure I heard was 35 percent. Okay. Now maybe somewhat, somewhat more of that as the economy retrenches mm -hmm. on the civilian side. And there's talk that the military presence may help insulate this area. Is, is that what you expect to see as, as the economy gets worse and worse? Is, is there an insulation factor there? We have seen that uh, in the past. We're seeing it now. And the reason for it is those budgets that are set uh, uh, for the military are based on the missions that the military has. Uh, the fact that there is a retrenchment in the civilian economy doesn't necessarily mean that the uh, Navy doesn't need as many pilots as they, as they did last year. In some cases, uh, with Whiting, I know they're planning to step up their production of helicopter pilots because of the needs of the Navy and the Marine Corps uh, worldwide, especially in the uh, area of Pakistan. Uh, Afghanistan right. and uh, Iran, Iraq. And you said this area was one of the few areas that actually came out ahead of the curve. We did. On the BRAC. We did. Changes. And we were concerned about that because uh, if you remember back, if you were here in 1995, uh, Whiting Field uh, popped up at the last minute as a candidate for closure. Uh, that was a surprise. Uh, a lot of effort was made. Uh, within a 24-hour period, working through the congressional leaders uh, from this area, and that was, uh, that was pulled off the list. Uh, they may have put it on the list for comparative purposes, mm. who knows. But it was a wake-up call uh, to us here locally that <clears throat> we needed to get even more serious about protecting uh, encroachment around that base, and hence the joint land use study was done about 2003, 2004, and that sort of set the, set the path as to what needed to be done to continue to make sure that that mission was protected mm -hmm. and uh, we kept that base here. We're told um, by federal officials that there are no political considerations uh, on these BRAC decisions. And I, from your experience, w would you agree with that? Is that completely po politics free? <laughs> well, let me say this. There, there have been uh, a number of BRACs over the years, uh, going back to the early 90s. Uh, and up until 2005, there was a lot of political involvement behind the scenes to make sure one base uh, had an advantage over another base. And there were trades back and forth. Uh, 2005, they came out with a different process uh, to, quote, depoliticize uh, the BRAC process. And for the most part, it did take uh, the politics out of it. Uh, what it. That BRAC was not run in a situation where a powerful senator or a congressman could step in at the last minute and start doing horse trading and all that type of stuff. Uh, those recommendations from the BRAC committee went direct to Congress, went direct to the President and to Congress for approval without going through all of the horse trading with the politicians. I suspect any uh, upcoming BRAC will be handled along those same lines. And what they'll be looking at is, they'll be looking at, all right, is the military uh, welcome and supported in that area? Uh, is the base operating uh, effectively and efficiently in that mission? Uh, could it be done cheaper someplace else? Uh, 
and that will is what will factor into a recommendation to either reduce or close a base and relocate that mission somewhere else. The big advantage we have here, and we can't forget it, is that we've got location, location, location. And I'm not talking about to the beaches. I'm talking about to the airspace. Uh, with the thousands of square miles of airspace and military operating areas uh, over northwest Florida and out in the Gulf, if they took uh, Whiting Field and relocated it someplace else for training, or they took Eglin Air Force Base and relocated it someplace else, where are they going to get the airspace? It doesn't exist. What's going on with the city of Valparaiso? What's, and, and could that benefit this county in any way? I th well, I don't have any first-hand knowledge of what's going on in Valparaiso, mm -hmm. uh, other than what I read in the paper uh, and information that comes to me from uh, folks that live over that way. Um, what lesson does it have for us? I think there's a, a very good lesson, and that is if Valparaiso had taken the actions that this county took in its foresight five years ago to uh, take the time, the effort, spend the money to do a joint land use study where we identified with, with the military what the needs of the base were and then prioritized those properties uh, closest to the base that would be candidates for acquisition, uh, either through outright purchase or through uh, purchasing uh, development rights uh, to that property, because you can protect that property through a development right if you own that as well. Uh, if, if they had done that, they, probably, they may not be facing the same level of uh, opposition uh, that we're seeing now. And matter of fact, this editorial that came out in just yesterday's uh, news journal entitled Protecting Our Military Bases says the same thing. And they give uh, a lot of kudos to Santa Rosa County and Escambia County mm -hmm. for what, what's been done in the past and what we're doing now. Over the next, um, I believe it's eight years, we're expected to see an influx of um, almost 10,000, 11,000 people related to the service members coming in. I can tell you, uh, with the Joint Strike Fighter, uh, depending on how many aircraft uh, uh, are, are based there, there's some discussion that uh, after the first 59 aircraft, uh, the remaining 48 may be based someplace else. Uh, that, that, that decision has not been made. But we anticipate about 4,800 uh, military and uh, uh, dependents uh, arriving for the Joint Strike uh, Fighter and another 10,000 uh, arriving uh, with the move of the 7th uh, Special Forces Group. How is that, uh, or how do you expect that to impact construction in this area? Because we, we have a lot of empty homes right now for sale. Is, is there going to be an uptick <coughs> still in construction? I, well, <coughs> excuse me, there certainly will be an up, uptick in construction. Because both. they're going to Eglin mostly, are they not? There, there's going to be construction at Eglin, uh, both at uh, the, the main base as well mm -hmm. as on the range. Uh, to support the 7th seventh, uh, seventh group. Uh, and I think a lot of the excess housing uh, that uh, is on the market right now, you're going to see that, uh, that fill up fairly quick. Is there another brack in the wind? You know, they were to we were told in 2005 that that would be the last brack. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody believed it. Uh, those that had been through, you know, four or five other bracks didn't think this would be the end. Everybody knows that we've got an extensive mission ongoing right now in Iraq and Afghanistan, at some point that will wind down and that will probably trigger another attack. Well, Deborah, you had a you had a, a, a military issue that you wanted yes. to talk about a, a moment, so tell our viewers what the subject is. And now this is something we didn't talk about during our interview with Mr. Gandhi, but apparently there's, there's great concern. Eglin Air Force Base is moving to allow a private developer basically to have a piece of the beach. Right. Uh, it's going to be a resort they're going to put there.